Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, for the past two weeks, I've been quite busy making a game for the Meta Game Jam. A Game Jam, for those who don't know, is a game creation event where people from around the world make a game in a usually short period of time and around a given theme. Some famous game jams include Ladam Dare, the Global Game Jam, and more recently, the GMTK Game Jam. This game jam lasted two weeks, and as the name implies, the theme was Make a Game About Games. Now this theme is packed with possibilities. One could have fun making a sequel, a parody, or a remake of his or her favourite game, or break the fourth wall and really blend the actual player in with the story and characters. Another possible avenue with this make a game about games theme is create something about the game development world. Perhaps an adventure underlining the process of making a game from scratch or a world filled with bugs representing programming difficulties that you must blast away. Game mechanic deconstruction, gaming culture and or external interactions in your game were other exciting options devs could explore. So first of all, I had to come up with an idea for my game. Since the theme was so open and exciting, I entered a period of creative block. I had too many ideas, but wasn't really satisfied with any. For example, I dreamed up a game where the player character would enter a game over scene and wouldn't be able to hit restart. In other words, a tragic tale where the character would be stuck in a gloomy and dangerous game over world, filled with the corpses of past failed player avatars. I also thought of making a brutal platformer where each time the player character died, he would suffer some physical mutation, cursing the player for playing so badly. Another concept I almost went with was inspired by Harry Potter's magical chess. Basically a strategy game where the player's troops and minions would directly talk to the player and give him advice on what he or she should do. But I felt that was a little too programming ambitious and worried that I wouldn't have the time to complete such a creation. So after some prototyping and back and forths, I finally settled on an idea. And this idea, two weeks later, ended up as a game called They Have No Choice. Now obviously I recommend and would love that you play the game first before continuing to watch the video, since I'm about to spoil the crap out of it. In short, the game is about this strange black furball whose dream is to rescue the princess, but who will slowly come to realise that in fact he is programmed to kill her. Basically, the game is filled with characters who have goals, dreams and hopes, but are limited to say and do what me, Noah, the evil game developer, programs them to say and do. So we have the actual playable character who wants more than anything to be the hero and rescue the princess, but was made to be the evil villain. There's this poor fella who was programmed to be the victim, and this one who wants to move so badly but was only given an idle animation. All these characters have been programmed to do a certain thing in the world. Their fate is sealed, they have no choice. Now all of this was made entirely with the Unity game engine and Adobe Photoshop for the art. I went with a silhouette grave art style with the use of soft 2D shapes for lighting. I was able to quickly change the atmosphere, going for something lighthearted and optimistic for the first scenes and gradually darkening the sky as the protagonist comes to realize his fate and place in the world. Silhouette characters and environments are also quick to make, which is perfect for a game jam where time is a limited and precious resource. As for the environment, it is actually composed of some grass which moves under the character's weight, blowing flowers in the wind, puffy clouds and some buzzing flies. All these elements were quick and easy to make, but put together they made up for some nice locations. For Unity users out there wondering how I got the soft looking grass moving underfoot, my solution is in fact very simple but quite performance heavy. 
all I did was put a box collider and rigid body on each grass tuft, and if the player collides with it, I would play a simple move animation. But the most challenging part of this project for me was telling the story. Once the simple art style established and dialogue system working, I was free to pour my time on making various scenes, each revealing to the player a part of this tortured world, filled with characters who aren't free to do as they wish, pursue their dreams or make any kind of choice. Even the real hero of the game, whom we see in three cutscenes I made using Unity's animation window, which by the way is the tool I use for all my 2D animations, isn't free or necessarily happy. Though I never ended up making it, I planned on having a scene where the hero laments himself over the fact that he must endlessly rescue this princess whom he doesn't even love. So though the story unfolds itself into some bleak, despairing adventure, I wanted it to end well and lingered for a while on ways to make it so. I started by making the bad ending, where the player would end up squashing the princess because he's the baddie and was programmed to do so. And only then did I dream up the brighter, good ending. The only way the characters in this game could be free from their programmed state was if the game actually bugged. If scripts began to dysfunction and set behaviours went out the window, freeing these tortured beings from their carved in stone destiny. And boy did I have fun making this buggy world, numbers playing a jittery animation and characters spitting out nonsensical phrases. At this point anything worked, bad animations, art or sentences were all part of the bug and the characters were at last free from their invisible shackles, free from the code stopping them from living out their dreams. Things end with the doomed boss telling the player how great he feels, how despite the world falling apart, he's free, free to make choices and live on his own terms. Now with only one day left before the end of the game jam and a busy day of high school in front of me, I had to rush the audio in the evening and at night. I had a pack of plans for sound effects and music, so I started by giving each character in the game a little noise which would trigger when the player got near enough. This little touch, though far from polished, was meant to give each NPC and encounter an extra bit of personality and was also a cool way to convey their emotions. <laughs> These abstract sounds were done using my Blue Yeti microphone and edited a little in Audacity. I also made a couple soundtracks using Busca Kiol. My goal here was to make some music that would not irritate or distract the player from the story and dialogue. So I did my best with my beginner composing skills and came up with a soft little tune meant for the initial bright scenes and a more gloomy and unsettling soundtrack for, well, you guessed it, the darker, more tragic parts of the game. I also had fun making a buggy sounding soundtrack and a more dynamic, action oriented piece meant for some of the battle scenes. All in all, I was pretty happy with the sounds and music, though with some extra time I would have loved adding fade in and out to the soundtracks so the transitions between scenes feels more smooth. A volume slider would have also been a nice add-on, but never saw the light of day due to the fast approaching deadline. And that will mark the end of this behind the scenes video. This was my second game jam, the first being Ladam Dare 40 with Be Yourself. And again, it was an epic experience. I now look forward to Ladam Dari 41 coming up in three weeks, but until then, I'll happily continue making my strange 2D platformer and working on a pack of game dev tutorials for the channel. Now, before leaving you, I wanted to give a shout out to all those that participated in this game jam. I had a wonderful time playing your creations and wish you all the best of luck for your future projects. Also a big thanks to the Jam's host, Xavier, 
for getting all of this organized and bringing together a bunch of developers to make awesome stuff. With that said, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video. Also consider following me on Twitter and joining the Blackthorn Prod Discord server for in-depth game dev chats. Alright, stay tuned, cheers!